you say here, after I completed Special Forces MOS training in March 1970, we were all then assigned to a group. At this time, 5th Group was responsible for Vietnam, and as warriors, everyone wanted to be assigned to 5th Group, including myself. However, there were two groups at Fort Bragg, 6th Group and 7th Group. I was assigned to 7th Group. Like any good soldier, you do as you are told and make the best of it. I was proud to be a Green Beret. That summer brought me to the Nottenhalle, am I saying that right? Nottenhalle. Nottenhalle uh, National Forest, from which I was picked to be part of Bull Simon's mysterious mission. So on September 2nd, 1970, as a member of the advance party, we loaded on the C-123s southbound. So Bill Simons, <clears throat> this guy is a legend. Um, World yeah. War II, he fought in, in New Guinea. He was a ranger. He conducted a raid. Uh, that was a that was a POW rescue. They rescued in the Philippines over 500 POWs, right. many of whom had participated in the Bataan Death March. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he'd gotten out for a couple of years, <coughs> and then came back in. He was in Special Forces. He was in SOG. I mean, he this guy was a, a, a legendary guy. And how did that happen? That you got picked for this. For this mission, how'd you hear about the mission? How'd you get picked? Well, uh, I was up at Nata Haley and I was training. Uh, I was working with a bunch of master sergeants and being uh, E5, and uh, we were teaching mountain climbing and rope tying to officers and some of the guys in seventh group. And I, we needed some supplies, so uh, colonels uh, told me to go into town and pick up supplies, and which Nata Haley is about. No, probably 250, 300 miles from Fort Bragg. So I went back down to Bragg, and a couple of my buddies said, hey, when I got down there, they said, hey, do you see where Bull Simons is looking for uh, volunteers? And, of course, Bull Simons, I mean, just, I mean, that wasn't enough to excite you. Then you didn't want to be there. So uh, I said, well, I'm going to go down and see what he's talking about because they said if you want to he was going to be down at the we call it the little white house there at fort bragg I got down there it was packed i mean there was probably 500 plus special forces guys there and bull came out on the stage and he always had a little cigar in his mouth he never smoked it i don't know he just chewed on it you know <laughs> but he he i and i had never seen the guy so that was kind of my first uh, Introduction to Colonel Sinnoh. And he, he looks like a legend. He, Just his, his physical appearance, he looks like a legend. Yes, he, he is a legend. And, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, he's, uh, yeah, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> and uh, so when he came on stage, you know, he said, I was looking for uh, some volunteers for a moderately hazardous mission. And, uh, I always wondered what he called hazardous you know, <laughs> compared to what we were uh, in getting ready to go do. But uh, uh, he said there's no TDY, so, you know, that eliminated some guys. Uh, you know, everybody <laughs> wants temporary money, <laughs> duty money. And uh, he said if you're interested, get back here, and we'll start the interview process at uh, 1,300 hours. So I, uh, I went back and... Uh, Put my name on the list, and the next I, I came back to. Uh, they had two sergeant majors doing a lot of the interviewing, two command sergeant majors, and we were in a line at the seventh group uh, facility b- billets, and uh, it was about no, oh, probably about five thirty, I guess, and I was sitting there, and nobody's called me, nobody's called me, and everybody else pretty much gone, and out walks these two. C- Sergeant Majors, and they're walking out the door, and I'm thinking, well, they didn't interview me. And so I ran after him and hollered at him. I said, you know, hey, you guys didn't interview me. And they said, what's your name? And I said, Buckler. And they said, well, and he had a clipboard on it. He looked at it and he says, I don't have your 201 file. That's the military and the Army. That's your uh, file. It tells you everything about who you are and what you've done and your records. And I said, they said, uh, well, I want to interview. And they said, well, you get your 201 file. I'll be back here first thing in the morning. We'll interview you. So, okay. So a buddy of mine at that time was one of my roommates. A bunch of us lived off base. And we had seven of us in 
in the sixth and seven of us in uh, uh, seventh group. So we were the only time we were together was payday and holidays, and so we kind of the neighborhood I think was glad to see us move. But <laughs> you know, it was the deputy sheriff lived down the road from us, and he was always stopping by and said, "Guys, can you just hold it down <laughs> just a little bit?" We'd say, "Yeah." So, but anyway. Um, I went in for the interview, you know, and they asked me if I could weld. And I said, I grew up on a farm, and our neighbor Sam welded everything we ever broke. So I, I looked at that, and I thought, I can do that. So I said, yeah, I'm a welder. <laughs> and uh, you, So you felt like you could weld because you watched your buddy right. weld. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like your attitude. It's a good attitude. Yeah, I didn't, they didn't have a welder, so I wouldn't have to prove myself yet. <laughs> and then uh, they wanted to know if I did scuba. And I, I hadn't at that point done scuba, so I said, no, I don't do scuba. And then they just asked me some general questions, you know, how, what, how much combat have you been? And I'm thinking, they got my two-on-one file. I have no combat experience. And so I said, no, I have I've no, none. So I said, okay, well, thanks. I thought, well, at least they let me interview, so, you know, thank you. And I walked out the door. Got back up to Nata Haley then, and a couple of days later, the uh, colonel from our called me into his office up at the Nut Haley there, and he says, uh, pack your bag. And I said, well, okay. He says, uh, you made uh, Bull Simon's list. And I said, really? And he said, yep. So I said, okay. And <laughs> down I went. You know, I'm very excited, not even knowing what we were going to do, just the fact that we made it. Did, did you have any idea why they selected you to this day? I, the only thing I could figure out is they needed some, uh, in special forces. Aside they, from your <laughs> crack welding skills? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that one. You know. <laughs> um, I think what they needed was some grunts. And yeah. in special forces, an E5 is the lowest rank. Mm-hmm. So they, I, I was on the advanced party, and we went down and set up the compound and uh, we, uh, when they swept the building, we put the Constantina wire around and put the field phone out. And then I pulled guard duty on the, we had to guard that building 24 by seven. And I thought it was a little unusual because when we pulled guard duty at Bragg, you got, you got a, an M16 in one round maybe, you know. <laughs> and this one, we had an M16 in full round and we orders, if something goes south, shoot. And that, I thought, there's something serious on this mission that uh, they're not telling everybody about, but, you know, we did what we were told to do. And uh, uh, that's uh, I pulled guard duty, and when I wasn't pulling guard duty, I was either sleeping or training because I had to train with the other guys during when I wasn't pulling guard duty. 